This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. In case you didn't already know, I'm doing a challenge this year called Monkey Mondays, where every Monday I watch a monkey movie. Which is to say, when I heard that a film called Monkey Man was coming out, <laughs> You could say I went bananas. Monkey Man is a new action movie about an underground street fighter who sets out to seek revenge against the local elite. It stars, is produced by, is written by, and most importantly, is directed by Dev Patel. It's inspired by the legend of the Hanuman, and it is one hell of a movie. Dev Patel. How can you not love this man? I'm admittedly not entirely caught up on the Dev Patel essentials, but truly he has yet to disappoint me. He brings so much passion to everything he's in, even if it's a tiny little Wes Anderson short. And that says everything you need to know about his directorial debut, a movie that practically overflows with passion and energy. When it comes to actors turning directors, you're always bound to get something pretty unique, and not always in a good way. Actors have the upper hand for most filmmakers, and that to an extent, they can get passion projects greenlit based solely on their name being a enough to bring in some sort of crowd. And this both works in favor of and against the film. On one hand, yeah, mid-90s is a film that probably would have been a lot harder to get greenlit or find distribution had it not been sold as Jonah Hill's directorial debut. But on the other hand, Jonah Hill, regardless of how passionate he was about the project, did have a safety net. And you can kind of tell when watching the movie. I guess what I'm trying to say is if the film falls apart, it might be tough for them to direct something else, but it's not the end of the world. I'm not saying actors making the jump into to directing is always a bad thing. In fact, most of these movies are pretty good, but it is rare to see an actor shoot for the stars like this is what they were always meant to do the way Dev Patel does in Monkey Man. Dev Patel, the director, has a very clear vision. It stands out. The same way I know what a Greta Gerwig script sounds like, how a Jordan Peele movie feels, the way Dev Patel knows how to use a camera is something entirely fresh. Monkey Man is a delirious experience, in the best way. When watching it, I feel like I'm being tossed around, a real monkey in the middle situation, if you know what I mean. It toes a fine line of almost becoming too much. I could easily see the film being either hard to keep track of visually, or even nauseating to watch after a while, but miraculously, it doesn't feel that way. You feel the chaos, yeah, but there's a sense of control to it. No, you know what it is? It's Baz Luhrmann without the headache. And that is such a good thing to be. The scene when he splits his chest open is so much better than it should be. It is incredible stuff. Complain about the shaky cam all you want, but I think it kind of works. It's not just the camera being shaky, the image is going in and out of focus. At one point, the camera feels like it's just being like sweeped on the floor. I mean, it's no wonder apparently they broke one of the cameras. <laughs> but I think they achieved something really effective in doing all this. Think about all the times you've experienced extreme rage. Your head gets hot. You feel like you're moving faster than the rest of the world. What's in front of your eyes isn't blurry, but it's certainly not clear. Maybe that's just me. All I'm saying is, this film does a really excellent job capturing his pent-up aggression. It's exactly as messy as it should be. Apparently, this was hell to make. They lost the funding at one point, there were injuries, again, they broke a camera. It's like every monstrous hurdle a film could go through was thrown at this thing. And it only feels worth bringing up because you kind of see the scrappiness in the filmmaking. It's certainly rough around the edges. I was actively looking for the iPhone footage, so maybe that's the only reason I noticed it. Same goes for the GoPro footage. And usually, as you probably know, when films are forced to change up gear at an extreme level like that, it can be painfully obvious to the viewer. Like, any time a drone shot shows up in a film, I can usually notice the loss in quality kind of takes me out of it. But again, that doesn't happen here. The film is already so frenetic that these choices end up working. Heavily inspired by Korean action classics like Old Boy and I Saw the Devil, the film feels limitless with where it'll go with its action. I mean, there's so much glass in this movie. Just so much fucking glass. Objects I didn't even know could be weapons are weaponized in this thing. And that's what good action is all about. I'm no action expert, maybe I'm not looking in the right places, but Monkey Man is my favorite kind of action film in that the choreography satisfies me in unexpected ways. Going into it, you kind of know what to expect, but then this film still finds ways to surprise you. It goes even crazier than you think it'll go. Before getting into the meat of what makes this special, I do want to get what didn't work for me out of the way, which isn't much, admittedly. I like how much it established establishes the character in the first act, don't get me wrong. I think it makes everything that comes after it hit that much harder. But there are certain elements about the first act that felt a little sloppy compared to everything else. The pace was awkward. It moves in a way where you feel like there's supposed to be action happening, but there isn't actually any action happening. And that blend just didn't really work for me. I think on a rewatch, there's a chance it'll work better knowing where the story goes and all. But on the first watch, it mostly felt like the film trying to figure itself out, which it certainly does once the action kicks into gear. I also think the dialogue here and there, 
a bit corny, but come on. I'll excuse the dialogue because I think even if it's a little surface level, the actual film is anything but. See, Monkey Man is a bold directorial debut for a few reasons. There's the direction itself and the amount of confidence Dev Patel has towards the choices he makes here, but he takes it a step further in just how blunt he is in regard to the politics surrounding the film, in the film's critique of Hindu nationalism. The film, despite taking place in India and starring a mostly Indian cast, apparently still has no release plan in India. Circling back to the uphill battle of releasing this thing, Netflix dropped the film for reasons that aren't confirmed or clear, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. The point is, he takes a surprisingly bold and fearless stance on the subject he chooses to tackle. It's a noticeably dense film with loads to unpack, which may throw some people off for what they were expecting from an action film, but that's what makes it so special. To kick off your directing career with a film this unapologetic, this confident, this controlled, I can't imagine where Dev Patel is going to go from here. And what's even crazier is that if this still came out pretty damn good after the production hell that it went through, I can't imagine what he can do when things actually go right for him. Not to get corny, but I also genuinely loved the more heartfelt message at the center of the film. That to find success, he had to learn to fight with a purpose. It seems simple and obvious, but when I think about a simple little message like that in the context of the actual making of this film, it hits a lot harder. Dev Patel had some shit to say, and he wanted to say it to us in the most exhilarating way. What sets this apart from most action films, what makes it something that I'm gonna keep thinking about, is that it has loads of purpose behind it. Despite all odds, he made this movie happen, and he made an unforgettable film that I can see being talked about for years to come. And that just makes me smile. Thanks for watching, go watch Monkey Man, and form your own opinion, and before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. You can create a personalized website with their new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint, where you can create a unique online presence from the ground up using their professionally curated layout and styling options. They make it easy to launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated, optimized SEO so that you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. A part of Squarespace that makes it so great is their visual design tools. You can grow credibility and engage visitors with an unrivaled suite of visual design effects built in and ready to go on any Squarespace website. And with just a few clicks, you're also able to add your social and multimedia accounts and extend your brand's footprint. And if you need to create a portfolio, they got what you need. With their video collections feature, you're able to upload, organize, and access your video library and showcase your content on beautiful video pages. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Karsten to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.